What up dudes, it's Gaz, and welcome back to another Warframe video. So, Plague Star is coming out later today, and with Plague Star we'll have a pretty decent sized update with also Nidus Prime and Void Corrupted Hollow Keys getting a slight buff to the amount you're getting per mission, and some also like increased methods of obtaining them. Still not good, but I thought we should do a quick overview of of how I recommend to farm Corrupted Hollow Keys and what I consider the god rolls on these tenant weapons. Because what Corrupted Hollow Keys let you do, we are in the relay right now at the parent sequence. You can talk to this guy right here. Fortune. And he has four different melee weapons uh, that you can actually pick from. And remember, these are going to have different rolls that rotate every four days. As you can see right now, at the time of this video is recording, in one day and 23 hours and 14 minutes, these elements will change. So, for example, this... 43% Radiation Tenant Livia will be something else completely random. I do feel like they are weighted to be lower stats overall, um, but I'm going to go over what I consider the god rolls on these weapons because uh, there's the thing. here's the thing. A couple of them can actually get Slash, and if you know anything about damage in this game, you would know that Slash damage is the king of damage types in almost all situations. Um, the Heat thing, that's like it's just a bug, guys. It can be, it can be removed from the game at a moment's notice. Uh, so I'm not going to put any stock in the heat uh, cheesing with the heat procs and all that. Uh, so we're just going to go over Slash and what the actual intended gameplay features uh, meta of these weapons would be. So these have Slash high-weighted. So on the Tenant Livia and the Tenant Gregory, these are going to be actually, my recommendation to you will be low as possible you can get Toxin Rolls. And the reason for that is if you have a really low, here I'll show you my Tenant Livia with 25% Toxin, which I do consider the God Roll for the Tenant Livia. We'll have a full video on this thing in the, in the future, um, but look at this right here. So the weapon is normally just almost all slash. If we were to get, and we have 25.2% toxin, if we were to get a full 6% toxin roll, it would dilute our procs, and we'd, like this is a heavy attack build focused on corrosive, but if we had even higher um, elemental percentage here, we'd be getting hardly anything with the uh, light attack build. And light attacks, getting slash procs, this is more what we're looking for is here. So with no elemental mod on the build, 49.9 toxin damage, 178 slash damage. Our potential to proc slash is really, really high because of the low 25% roll. Impact and puncture, hardly ever proc with this thing. You technically could get a 25% impact roll, but I like to have the toxin here for potentially one-shutting corpus as slash procs aren't great against corpus. Uh, and it also does technically give us more procs for condition overload. Uh, since we've got four elementals or four different damage types on here, instead of if we had an impact roll uh, giving us only three damage types. Of course, you're using something like the epitaph, you're going to have plenty of procs in them anyway. Uh, but yeah, to, to highly weight your slash, you want to have a low elemental roll on the Livia and honestly, maybe the Grigori. The Grigori is a little bit more up in the air. Because the way that thing works is you fire off a disc of death that uh, hunts down. Or you actually, it, it doesn't hunt down enemies, but it like flies out and kills enemies. Um, so that one, I, I might go for a 6% uh, toxin on this one just for higher upfront damage. Um, but I'd say if you're doing light attack builds on the Grigori, definitely go for a 25% toxin to, to keep that high slash waiting. If you want to go for higher elementals, just go for max 60 toxin, max 60 radiation, whatever you like. I'd say toxin's probably the god roll on the Grigori. And then 25% Toxin, God Roll on the Livia for sure. Uh, this 43% Radiation one, eh, whatever. Uh, and if you don't really care about waiting for the Toxin one to show up, because it is random what he has, any Elemental will be fine as long as it's 25% just to keep that high slash waiting. Because uh, this thing is actually very hybrid viable. And keep in mind, it is a heavy attack weapon as well, two Anacondas are heavy attack weapons mainly. So, you know, you could maybe just not even bother with going with the low one. But to keep the... The potential of keep having a light attack build and a heavy attack build, I wanted to go with Toxin here. For the exec, this is much more straightforward. You want a max electric roll. You could technically go for other stuff too, but the reason I'm recommending to you to go for a max electric roll, 6% on the tenant exec, is because this thing is terrible. It has really low slash weighting and mostly impact. Now, on all these weapons, you technically could get a minus impact roll, but those ribbons are really, really rare, and I'm not going to really recommend a negative impact, like the possibility of a negative impact roll to most people. For the exec, I'd say go for max electric because there is a melee mod called Primed Beaver Strike. And the reason I'd say go for electric is because corrosive damage is going to be the best against Grenier since this thing cannot really proc slash. Um, 
Now, if you were to not go for, if you were to go for an electric roll, that's not going to really make the viral build as viable. Uh, but corrosive with like when you're using condition overload and all that stuff, it's going to be the way to do it in my personal opinion. Uh, if you want to go, if you want this, like a more safe element, you don't really care about the max corrosive damage from Prime Fever Strike, go for just Toxin, and then you can put like Shocking Touch, whatever it's called, to get high corrosive damage as well. Also gives you the flexibility of going viral uh, with the slam attacks from this thing. I'd say, honestly, Electric's going to be your best bet. Take, keep in mind, it takes 40 hollow keys to buy any of these, so you're already not really in the best situation. The Tenant Agendus, this thing has base electric damage. So if you were to get a Toxin roll like he currently has available, it becomes base corrosive damage. So for me personally, I'm thinking I'm going to either go with a max Toxin roll, so I could get this right now, turn my 55% electric one into a 60% Toxin one, giving me base corrosive, making the heavy attacks on the Tenant Agendus really hard hitting. But there's also the possibility you could go for a radiation roll. And the reason I suggest a radiation roll potentially is because since we've got base electric and impact, no slash here, we can get radiation, electric, and impact. If we were to put that prime fear strike mod I was telling you about right there, that's going to give us corrosive and radiation. Covers both health types and armor types for the Grenier. Um, I'd say overall probably the toxin is more reliable. Uh, but, you know, keep in mind that you, you could definitely get some more, uh, you know, variations there if you were to go for the radiation roll. Um, and all these weapons are honestly not even worth farming for, in my personal opinion. Um, but, you know, here's, here's another tip. If you have a 55% roll on your uh, melee weapon or your any of your Kuva Lich weapons, one infusion should get you to 60% after that. All right. Now that we've talked about the God Roll Elementals on all four of those weapons, let's go to the Void Storms I'd recommend to you. And we're also going to do a quick refresher on the Railjack build. Uh, so, yeah, just a quick refresher on those on those weapons. Grigori, 25% Toxin or 6% or Toxin to get the high slash weighting or just high base damage for the heavy attacks. Uh, for the Livia, I'd say, honestly, non-negotiable. Go for the 25% Toxin, God Roll. For the Exec, the Heavy Blade, which is a highly impact focus, I'd say go for Max Electric, so you can combine it in the Corrosive Image very easily. And then for the Agendas, it's more up, it's more of a personal preference thing. Either go for Toxin or go for Radiation for more variation. All right, so for the build, we, we have a, I'll link the videos for the full build guides for this in the description, but this is just a quick refresher. Um, so for doing Void Storms, you want to actually find the quickest missions possible. And um, the way you're going to do that is you're actually going to go over here to the uh, navigation. You're going to click the Railjack button. And here are the Void Storms. So things you're going to be looking for here. You want to look for um, either Exterminate or sometimes Spy. Skirmish usually takes really long. Volatile, just avoid it altogether. They're very long missions. So as far as missions, I would recommend personally, at least the ones that are up. I'll tell you the ones I think are just good in general. Um, as far as the ones that are up right now, I'd say New Gua Mines is still one of the best. Keep in mind they're buffing the amount you get when the, the Void Key actually drops by one. So I think it'll be getting like four or five from New Gua Mines. You can beat this mission in about two minutes with the full squad. A little bit, maybe a little bit longer, two and a half minutes. Uh, and it's, it's a very comfortable, easy farm. Keep in mind, lots of credits drop from uh, these missions as well. I'd also recommend uh, to go for potentially Peregrine Axis in the... in the uh, That's actually not... Okay, so don't do Peregrine Axis, actually. What you should be looking for is since they're buffing the amount you get from the Veil to 10, Calabash is one of the meta farm locations now, in my opinion. This is a pretty fast Railjack Exterminate Void... When it becomes a Void Fissure, you can get 10 per drop here. Uh, it's going to be one objective usually and like kill a couple cruise ships. Not too hard. You can have one of your teammates go do the bonus objective as well to get maybe like an internal bleeding or something like that. Calabash, potentially the meta uh, node for doing this. If you'd like to, you know, do the Grenier objectives, there's other missions as well. Um, you know, R9 Cloud's probably still pretty good. Um, Flexa's probably fine as well. But I'd recommend Calabash as the meta node for getting the most Void Keys. And also, it's usually an Axie Relic one, so you can open Axie Relics. Uh, but as far as the other planets, Saturn's got a pretty good one too. Uh, if I can remember which one it is, it's something like Broom Closet or something like that. Wh wherever the exter they all they are all skirmish. Never mind. Well, if you can find a decent one on uh, Saturn, and they go pretty quick sometimes. So just whatever's up, I'd say maybe give it a quick shot. Here, right here, we got Band Cluster. Sure, you have to kill like a lot of cruise ships, but you might potentially like that. And as far as Neptune, like I said, New Guam Mines. It's it's like if. It's really fast. It's it's definitely the fastest. It's reliable to have uh, kill a cruise ship and destroy some security nodes to get in the ship. Brahma spam your way through the whole ship. Takes about two and a half minutes with the full squad. As far as Pluto Proxima, 
Uh, you know, like I said, just look for uh, spy missions and exterminate missions. Don't do volatile because they're a waste of time. Defense is probably a ma major waste of time. So we got seven sirens, Peregrine Axis, and Orphex cannot be a fissure. That would be kind of cool, actually. All right, so that's the missions I'd recommend there. Uh, like I said, 40 void hollow keys per, per weapon. It's a lot still. The buff pr pretty much did nothing, in my opinion. And then here is the uh, a quick overview of the build I use for speedrunning these uh, void storms. So Onslaught Matrix makes you do more turret damage. The turrets aren't really a big deal. The, the Aura Mod's really up to personal preference, but there's certain ones like the Raider Matrix. It makes your arc wings move faster. Not really a big deal. Um, capture cruise ships increase speed and damage. <laughs> maybe maybe you could, if you don't have a fully upgraded Railjack and you need to use your, your arc wing, I wouldn't even recommend doing this right now. This is basically just a garbage mod in my opinion. You got Ironclad Matrix is going to increase the... It's basically going to make you more tanky. If you have a fully upgraded Railjack like I do, you're not going to really need this, but it's technically something you could mess with. Um, Elemental Resistance. This is actually pretty pretty good DR for your ship. Keep in mind, lots of the enemies do elemental damage to you, so this is technically making more tanky. Um, forge Cooldowns. Not really using that enough that the Forge Cooldown even matters. Turret Heat Capacity. That's pretty good for ongoing tuning Matrix. A decent option. But we've got Onslaught Matrix giving us increased damage when we have full health on our uh, Railjack. 20% uh, to reflect damage uh, over to other enemies. We have high shields and battle mod efficiency. I don't even know what that does, but it's this is a good one. As far as the other stuff we got here, we've got Predator for increased turret crit chance. If you're using AI crewmates, this is really helpful. Um, Ion Burn for increased speed. You're boosting all the time, basically, so very good. Hyper Strike for increased turret damage. If you're using the turrets, you, you need this mod. Uh, since we're, this is a Corpus build, we have the same basically same build on the Grenier and all that. We're using Granum's Nemesis, giving us increased turret damage against the Corpus. Cruising speed, increased speed when enemies are within 3,000 meters. A big speed upgrade. If you have this, it's a rank 10 mod. If you, if you don't have this, honestly, it's not a big deal. Just put a different mod in that slot. Uh, Revo Reducer to help you repair the ship easier. There's there's lots of options. Um, and that's that's the one that we got there because it's it's good. Uh, section density just like... Part of the turret uh, damage package with crit chance, crit damage, and overall damage, and Bane mods. Um, something that I like to use. Crimson Fu Fuji. Oh, gosh. We have to say that word again. D just a personal preference choice. There's definitely uh, protective shots as well. Um, so, you know, turret damage is increased when shields are above 75%. There's one that gives you shields back when you shoot with the turrets, um, which could potentially be pretty good as well. Uh, I just can't remember the name of it, honestly. Um... Yeah, so there's lots of options. This is the flex slot, basically. I like Crimson Fuji uh, just because it makes you do more damage. Uh, but, it, you, you know, fortify here it is. Fortifying Fire. On critical hit, replenish 3% of your shields. I mean, you're shooting so fast that you're going to become like a tank god. Shield getting tank god with Fortifying Fire. So if you have this, potentially worth running. But Crimson Fuji giving us crazy damage. We're going to keep that. And Artillery Cheap Shot giving you chance to not... Waste your ammo on the mega uh, cannon in the front. Very good if you have to kill multiple cruise ships. With if you're doing a grenier mission, you you must have this. If you don't have this mod equipped for grenier skirmish missions, I have a big problem with you right now. We're gonna talk after class. All right. As far as battle mods, these are some of the best battle mods in the game, in my opinion. We've got blackout pulse for stunning cruise ships and stunning fighters in a large area. Uh, pretty good stuff there. Definitely would highly recommend it. Uh, if you don't have, if you don't want to use that one for some reason, though it's the best. We got munitions vortex. Basically a relic of the past, but if you still want to cling to some hope that's good, go for it. And the other option is countermeasures, which is absolute garbage. The middle ability is Shatter Burst. This one's really good for taking out security nodes on the Corpus main ships. So just launch it once and they're done for. Um, also technically works on the Grenier asteroid bases as well. Um, so you could try that as well. Tether, just let it just let it be dead. It's fine. It, it, it served its purpose for long enough and it's dead now. So don't equip Tether. Particle Ram, if you don't like Shatter Burst, this is really good too. Uh, let you just like ram in enemies with a laser shield and kill them. And Seeker Volley, very good for AoE clearing. Uh, the other options are kind of mediocre, honestly. Void Hole just feels small nowadays, um, unfortunately. And Phoenix Blaze, it technically gives you more turret damage. So maybe if you're doing a situation with your crew members, uh, AI blasts everything down, you could use it. But it drains energy over time. I just don't like it personally. It's something you could definitely use. Um, I just think the Seeker Volley is the easiest one to use, for sure. And we'll quickly go to the dojo so we can show the parts. It, it's going to be just a quick, like, refresher. If you watch my, my uh, Meta Railjack parts video, it's 
it, it's the same crap, honestly, guys. So, yeah. Uh, so, lots of video guides coming out this week. We've got um, Plague Star coming out tomorrow, or the Plague Star guides coming out tomorrow, if I can get everything tested in time. Uh, Nidus Prime on Friday. And there's, I mean, there's probably the Ghoul Saw. I can't forget about the Ghoul Saw. There might be an emergency Ghoul Saw video on Saturday if it's good. I have a feeling the Ghoul Saw will not be good. Uh, so, you know, get ready for that. As far as the parts that I'm running, not everyone needs to run these parts. Vidar Shield Array, Levon Engines, Levon Plating, Zekti Reactor, All Mark III. For the turrets, the Meta Turret. For the front is the Zekti Fotor for shooting through the Corpus uh, Shields. The Zekti Talon is not the Meta one, it's just the one I like to use. This is usually for the AI crewmates. And Tycho Seeker, the best missile for blowing all these shield generators off the cruise ships easily. And that's basically it. All Almost maxed out intrinsics. Not going to level, level uh, 10 because it technically has a downside. Uh, and then the crew members, we have, we'll have videos on those in the channel as well. All right, guys. Hopefully you found this video helpful. Uh, it's a lot of information. I still wouldn't really recommend to farm them in the first place because, you know, they still suck to farm. But if you are just like, okay, well, I've gotten a four from Plague Star. Now let's finally get the tenant weapons because they technically buff the drops a little bit. Um, there you go. That's the things I'd recommend to you. And those are the builds I'd recommend to you um, if you're trying to speed run through these. And as far as the frame, since we're already here, the video is long enough. Let's quickly just show the Saren uh, speed running Void Fissures build that I've been utilizing a lot, actually. So we've actually got Saren. So the reason we're using Saren is that her third ability gives you crazy increased toxin damage, which is good against the Corpus. Molt makes you run faster, and we've actually subsumed on Helminth Mobility, making us run faster even further. Arcane Acceleration has spammed the Brahma even harder, and the Brahma is better than the Czar in this situation, as the Brahma does not have to reload a bunch of shots. We had the Czar equipped for other things, um, but if you have a Toxin Roll Brahma, you don't even need to play Saren, really, but we've decided to go for that. And as far as the build, it's a pure Toxin build with, uh, you know, just Prime Firestorm, Prime Band of the Corpus. Pretty simple stuff. Just kill the Corpus at max speed. All right, guys, take it easy. Peace.